By going back to aluminum, the iPhone 17 Pro Max cuts its carbon footprint by 67%. The environment comes first. Apple has safely moved from using two generations of high-quality titanium to aluminum to make its newest iPhone 17 Pro Max. Both the performance and the environmental ramifications are significant, signifying a strategic masterstroke redefining the next generation smartphone production process. Because Apple wants to be carbon neutral by 2030, switching from titanium to aluminum will have a bigger beneficial effect on the environment than on performance. According to a research by Materials Science Data, the corporation has cut its carbon footprint by 67% by employing aluminum instead of titanium. Even though titanium is stronger than aluminum, 6 into 1 versus 4 into 1, aluminum is considerably easier to recycle. Additionally, aluminiums of 237 thermal conductivity exceeds glasses to 0.6 permitting a natural heatsink at the top half of the device where the camera and the CPU produces the bulk of heat. Apple wants the iPhone 17 Pro Max to keep working well over time. To do this, they are adding aluminum frames to help it cool down better, which is very important for Pro models, particularly while doing heavy activities. People say that the iPhone 17 Air has some titanium in it to attract high-end consumers, while the iPhone 17 Pro Max is meant to show that the firm cares about the environment. Apart from this, aluminium decreases the weight of the smartphone by 10 to 15 grams, permitting greater battery capacities and urbane camera systems. This transition to aluminum from titanium by the corporation will motivate all the stakeholders to use sustainable materials. However, this shall not be the situation for the Android producers since they make use of recycled aluminium alloys together with hybrid material designs inside 18 months. The design philosophy of the iPhone 17 Pro Max implies that Apple is putting more focus on long-term sustainability rather than short-term performance increases. This increased emphasis on aluminium, together with enhanced heat management, portrays the gadget as a forward-looking investment instead of just another annual upgrade. True innovation originates not from the use of rare materials, but from the strategic use of proven technology to optimize both environmental and performance advantages. For those seeking for more of an update, this year's iPhone 17 basic model may be a letdown. Analyst Jeff Poo released details about the iPhone 17 in a research report from stock research company GS Securities, seen by McCroomers. According to him, the regular iPhone 17 will utilize the same A18 chip as the iPhone 16. The A18 chip will still be made utilizing TSMC3 nanometer technology. In additional comments, Pew also stated that the iPhone 17 would include 8 gigs of RAM, the same as the iPhone 16. By contrast, the iPhone 17 Pro versions should be fitted with A19 Pro CPUs. The much-rumored ultra-skinny iPhone 17 Air is reported to contain an A19 processor. If true, it's an odd move from Apple, which looked to be done with dividing processor generations across phones with the whole iPhone 16 series using an A18 chip, even the somewhat more wallet-friendly iPhone 16e that released this spring. Though to be fair, with the new A18 CPU and access to Apple intelligence, the iPhone 16 is pro enough, something we're convinced Apple definitely wants to avoid to attract people into buying the higher-end pro versions. The iPhone 17 seems to be a minor improvement over the iPhone 16 with no new designs, despite the predicted facelift the pro versions are slated to get. It could include a quicker 120Hz display and a 24MP front camera, both twice the 60Hz and 12MP of the iPhone 16, but that's about it. There are contradictory claims that the iPhone 17 will boast a 6.3-inch display, up from the 6.1-inch screen on the 16, according to display expert Ross Young. However, Pooh has asserted that it would retain the same size. In contrast, analyst Main Chi Kuo claimed in April that the iPhone 17 Air and the Pro versions would feature 12 gigs of RAM, a long-needed update from Apple. The iPhone E line is expected to become an annual release, but if the iPhone 17 hardly advances, where does it leave the affordable iPhone? On the flip side of the coin, where does that leave the basic iPhone if it's scarcely more powerful than the iPhone 16e, which isn't that much of a downgrade from the iPhone 16, despite the regrettably higher price? 
Apple is anticipated to reveal the iPhone 17 family in September during its normal autumn timeframe for new devices. We're not anticipating any huge changes with the iPhone 17 Pro Max display, but that's not to suggest we may not see some things alter with the following iteration. One report indicates that the phone might arrive with a thinner dynamic island, owing to the presence of new, slimmer components. Leaker Digital Chat Station explicitly calls for a smaller dynamic island for the iPhone 17 Pro Max with the assistance of a Medellin's design for Face ID. Leaker Instant Digital has also claimed that the iPhone 17 series display panel would be constructed with a super hard anti-reflective layer that will make it more scratch resistant than you think. A more recent story, meanwhile, claims Apple is eliminating that function because to manufacturing difficulties. Apple's A-series CPUs are among the finest mobile chips today, and each version has given much higher performance than its predecessor. We anticipate that tendency to continue with the A19 Pro chipset, which should appear on iPhone 17 Pro and Pro Max later in the year. While there had been reports that Apple may move to a 2 nanometer technology, which would make the A19 Pro even smaller than the 3 nanometer A18 Pro, that shift presumably won't happen until the debut of the iPhone 18 at the earliest. This implies we'll be seeing 3 nanometer devices until at least 2026, probably longer, depending on how development proceeds. Instead, A19 series chips are now scheduled to be built utilizing an enhanced version of TSMC3 nanometer technology. This should bring gains to performance and energy efficiency relative to the A18 series, although not to the same degree that adopting a 2 nanometer technology would. However, any gain to energy efficiency could imply an even better battery than we've previously witnessed on the iPhone 16 Pro Max. The greater performance may imply a hotter running processor, but happily it appears Apple's thought of that. A vapor chamber cooling mechanism, which employs liquid within a copper pipe to transport heat away from a device's most vital components, might be included to the iPhone 17 Pro versions, potentially eliminating the issue. Finally, Jeff Pugh and Ming Che Kuo both anticipate that Apple might incorporate 12 gigs of RAM in the iPhone 17 Pro Max. That's a 50% improvement compared to the iPhone 16 series, and would presumably be so that Apple can deliver even more on-device AI in future versions of Apple Intelligence. The iPhone 17 Pro Max allegedly won't have the C1 modem that Apple debuted with the iPhone 16e. Only the iPhone 17 Air is planned to add that component. But the Wi-Fi chip in the iPhone 17 Pro Max apparently will be a new type manufactured by Apple, a first for the iPhone's connection. We haven't heard much about the iPhone 17 Pro Max battery right now, but if the chip's claimed efficiency enhancements prove to be genuine, then we should see the battery life last much longer. Considering the iPhone 16 Pro Max lasted more than 17 hours in our tests, it would be a rather stunning sight to see. We've also heard reports that Apple might make iPhone 17 batteries simpler to remove, owing to a new form of adhesive. It's probable that this is the same ionic liquid battery adhesive used on iPhone 17, which enables repair personnel to remove the battery with a few volts of electricity. That makes it a lot simpler to remove than prior adhesive strips, which were cumbersome and frequently needed solvents to properly remove. Rumor has claimed that Apple may be creating its own batteries, preparing to launch them on iPhone 17 series. While we don't know many information regarding this development, it's reported that Apple plans to give significantly improved performance compared to the existing one, which you'd anticipate since the last thing we want is for battery life to go worse. But that's still a fantastic thing if Apple can pull it off. In addition to new or Apple-made batteries, a rumor indicates that Apple could offer reverse charging to the Pro variants of the iPhone 17. Reverse charging allows your phone charge other devices, mainly headphones like the AirPods 4. The new function would theoretically allow 7.5 charging, however it's unclear whether Apple will strive to match the currently existent version on Samsung's Galaxy series. This year's iPhone software upgrade, iOS 19, likely to release around the same time as the iPhone 17 debut. However, we'll have a clearer notion of what to anticipate from such software far before the autumn. You'd also anticipate Apple intelligence to be a focus of this year's software upgrades, as Apple attempts to follow up on the debut of its AI features.
A majority of the updates will be Siri upgrades that were postponed from iOS 18. However, we've heard suggestions that built-in applications in iOS 19 will be modified to better take use of Apple intelligence. A significant debate right now is whether iOS 19 will truly be named that. Just before of Worldwide Developers Conference 2025, there's rumors that Apple is modifying the naming method it employs for all software, going from version numbers to years. So iOS 19 would in reality be iOS 26, as in 2026, to represent the year following the software's autumn release. If the early iPhone 17 Pro rumors pan out, it doesn't seem like Apple is going to cease lavishing attention on its Pro versions. Potential camera enhancements and a fresh design lead the changes we've heard about so far, and more potential improvements might surface in the months between now and the debut of the new Apple phones. All eyes figure to be on the iPhone 17 Pro's pricing and what influence tariffs may have on the cost of upgrading your phone in the autumn. Unfortunately, that image doesn't appear like it's going to grow clearer anytime soon. So, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more tech news. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.